to the extent any of you ever work in dusty archives, you will know what I'm talking about because when I talk about it with people who do, they all sort of, their, their eyes light up. There is this odd metaphysical thing that happens where you're handling the same document that John Rutledge handled and there is a connection, it's, it sounds silly, but there is a connection that I felt. Um, and you do get some insights. Uh, one of the interesting experiences I had was uh, I, I read a passage involving the Rutledge Committee, which I think was such an important step. The draft, all we really have from that uh, are the drafts that they produced. And they had two different drafts, and they were very important in their differences. And I went to the Historical Society of Pennsylvania and went and, and looked at the original drafts, which were produced in Ferrand. I could see them there. But when I saw the originals, it, was, it gave me such a better understanding of their editing process because they used scribes in those days to create drafts because, you know, everything was handwritten until they finally printed up a draft. And they did print it up ultimately, but amongst themselves they used scribes. So they had to create five copies. Um, and the scribes had beautiful handwriting. And then when Rutledge would enter the edits, you could barely make out his, his handwriting was brutal and impossible to read. And you could see where they were fiddling with stuff. And it was uh, a much, uh, it, it just put me in touch with the process. And, you know, I, I edit documents all day as a lawyer. I edit documents as a writer. Uh, I edit manuscripts. And, it, and it, it gave me a tangible feel for the process that was going on. And it was much easier to imagine how the committee worked together. Um, so it, it, it was, uh, uh, it was very valuable ultimately.